Hi, my name is Tom Mavro and welcome to the Cut It TV training channel. The channel has been set up to provide easy to follow training tutorials in today's key media production software. Cut It itself is a UK based training company with over 15 years experience providing hands on training in media production. If you would like any further information about our training services, please visit our website at www.cut-it tv or check us out on social media i hope you enjoy the following tutorial we're going to have a look at the first part of the process of creating an initial sequence of clips within Adobe Premiere. The first part of this process is actually opening clips up, marking clips with in and out points to select the relevant section of a clip and then editing that section of the clip down onto a sequence. So to open a clip up and review it, the best way of doing this is to just double click on a clip and that will open the clip up in the source monitor. You can play through the clip in a number of ways. First of all, you can scrub through the clip by clicking on the blue playhead handle and dragging that through the clip. Secondly, you can play the clip by hitting your spacebar on your keyboard to play and then hitting it again to pause. There's also a set of buttons that will allow you to do the same thing. So this button here, which is one of the transport control buttons, will allow you to play and pause. Because playing a clip is such a fundamental thing that you do constantly when you're editing, you may as well use the keyboard shortcut instead of using the buttons, it's much quicker. To move one frame at a time through the clip, you can tap your right or left arrow on your keyboard. So the right arrow moves you one frame at a time forwards through the clip, and the left arrow moves you one frame at a time backwards through the clips. The equivalent on-screen buttons are these two here, step forwards and step backwards. If you hold down your left or right arrows, Premiere will jog through the clip, which does like a, effectively does a, like a slow motion play through the clip forwards or backwards if you hold down your left arrow. Another useful set of keyboard shortcuts is JKL. On your keyboard, L, if you tap it, plays the clip forwards. Initially this plays at normal speed, but if you tap the key again, it will double the speed. If you tap it again, it will double it again, and if you tap it again, it will double it again. K, if you tap it, pauses the clip, and J plays backwards, initially at normal speed, if you tap it again, it doubles, tap it again, it doubles it again, and tap it again, it doubles it once more. And then K to pause. The keyboard shortcuts I've just discussed work not only in the source monitor, but work in all the other playback windows within Adobe Premiere. So they'll work in the program monitor and also on the timeline. Another couple of useful shortcuts are on your keyboard, the home and end keys. On a Mac keyboard, they're the two diagonal arrow keys on your keyboard. On a PC, they'll actually say home and end, and they allow you to jump from the start to the end of the clip. If you're on a laptop keyboard on a Mac and you don't have a home and an end key, you can also do the same procedure by holding the function key down, that's the little key with FN written on it, and tapping your right or left arrows on your keyboard. We're going to select a section of the clip ready to edit. I'd play through my clip, find the section that I wanted, so let's say we use this shot here, this close-up. I'd bring my playhead back to the start of the shot and fine-tune it using my left and right arrows. And then to mark the start of the section of the shot that I want to use, I'll either hit this button here, which marks an in point in the clip and they will therefore mark the start of the section I want to use, or use the keyboard shortcut to mark an in point, which is quite easy to remember, it's I for in. Once you do this, it leaves a little in point marker at the playhead position. So this little blue bracket icon here represents the in point. If for any reason you want to reset that in point, you just move your playhead to a new frame and you tap I again and it will just update the in point. You can only ever have one in point in the clip at any one time. Then you would either hit play or shuttle forwards through your clip to where you want the shot to end and set an out point in the clip at that point by either hitting the out point marker here or better still using the keyboard shortcut for out, which is O on your keyboard. And just like the in point, if you decide you want to amend that out point, you just move the playhead to a new frame and hit O again. Once you have selected the part of the clip you want to edit, you then need to get that shot down onto the timeline. And there are a number of different methods to do this. We'll look at these different methods in a separate tutorial, but probably the simplest way of getting the clip down onto the timeline is to click in the middle of the source monitor with your mouse, hold your mouse down and drag the clip down onto the timeline. Initially, you'll always edit onto the video one track and usually the audio one track for, 
for audio, particularly if it's dialogue based. And once you drop a clip down onto the timeline, a preview of that clip will appear in the program monitor. The program monitor shows you the video output of your timeline. I'm just going to zoom in slightly on the clip on the timeline. There's more than one way of doing this. I can use my mouse and click on the end of the scroll bar here at the bottom of the timeline, click on one of the little handles there and drag inwards and that then zooms me in on the clip. I can also expand the tracks themselves to see the clip in more detail on the timeline and I can do that by moving to the top of the video track so I get a little trim symbol with my mouse, drag upwards, that will increase the vertical height of the track and also then shows me a thumbnail for the clip and if I do the same to the bottom of the audio one track and drag down that will reveal the audio waveform for the clip. I can then go through and either open other clips up or, or mark in and out points for different sections of the same clip and drag those down and butt them up to the end of the previous clip and start to build a sequence. I'm just going to add another clip and before we finish the tutorial I'm just going to mention a few things about navigating through clips and playing clips on the timeline. So first of all, if I click on the timeline, I can scrub through the sequence of clips here by dragging the playhead at the top of the timeline, just in the same way as I can drag the playhead in the source monitor. So you just click at the top here and drag. Or if I click, it will jump the playhead to wherever I click. This also moves the playhead in the program window. The same shortcuts that I mentioned in the source monitor work, so spacebar, plays and pauses. The left and right arrows on your keyboard go a frame at a time forwards, a frame at a time backwards through the clip. If you hold those down, it will jog through the clip, forwards or backwards. I can also use J, K and L. So L, tap it again, doubles the speed, J, plays backwards. You can also use your home and end keys to jump to the start of the end of the sequence, like so. On a Mac laptop, hold function down and tap the left and right arrows to do the same thing. There is one more very useful shortcut, though, on the timeline, and that is using the up and down arrows on your keyboard. Down arrows jump you from clip to clip, so it lets so it effectively jumps you to the in frame of each clip and then eventually to the end of the sequence. The up arrow jumps you backwards to the in frame of each clip. So it's jumping you to the start of each clip on your sequence. In the source monitor, if I click back in there and use the same shortcuts, this time the up and down arrows jump you from the start of the clip to an in point in a clip to an out point in a clip to the end of the clip and back again. and back again by tapping the up key. 